There is an organization called the Earth Organization, which has been working in the Gulf of Mexico to find solutions which would truly resolve the toxic situation. On April 20th, 2010, the Deepwater Horizon oil rig exploded. The disaster did not end with the capping of the well. In fact, it has been made worse and perpetuated by the use of toxic chemical dispersants that are destroying the economy, human health, and sea life of the Gulf. there is a solution to bringing the waters back to their pre-oil blowout condition, but government regulators are preventing it from being used, and the disaster is not over. There are techniques out there which can help solve the problem, and quickly. Let's start with the most basic principle. Mother Nature, left alone, will eventually clean up the spill. So what is the purpose of taking extra steps to clean up oil spills? There is a very exact answer to that question. Because time is important. The longer the oil stays, the more deleterious or dangerous it is for our commercial fisheries. And that's the basic reason you clean up an oil spill, is so that even single-celled organisms can live and by them being able to live, then you know everything else in the environment will be able to survive. The word toxin means a poison that injures health or destroys life when absorbed by a body. When something is toxic, it is poisonous. So the toxins need to be reduced immediately. The main method that is being used right now to attack the oil spill is by spraying chemicals on top of the oil or injecting them into the water. These chemicals are called dispersants. The dispersant takes the oil off the surface and spreads it throughout the water. As a result, much of the oil sinks to the ocean floor. That does not mean the oil is gone. It doesn't make sense to add dispersants, which actually increase the toxicity even more to the environment, which absolutely hinders the ability for living organisms to survive were not told that this substance was being used from what I was told five times more toxic than the oil itself. So what are we doing here? A scientist put on a dry suit, a suit to go underwater with that prevents any water at all from touching any part of your body. Because of the dispersant in the water it was so caustic that it started eating through part of the dry suit and actually got inside the suit and in contact with her skin. By the next day she started coughing up blood. That's one of the things that this dispersant does, is it actually breaks down red blood cells and causes you to hemorrhage internally. I was contacted by companies uh, such as Oil Spill Eater, for example, and other companies that, have, that showed and demonstrated to me that there is a non-toxic solution here. There is a scientifically proven way to help Mother Nature clean up oil spills and toxins in the environment. It's been around for 30 years. In fact, it's cleaned up thousands of oil spills. And what this technology is called is bioremediation. Bioremediation is the name given to methods which use naturally occurring good bacteria, or microbes, to remedy or clean up oil spills and other toxic situations. It just simply does not make sense that it is not being used right now to clean up the Deepwater Horizon spill. It's going to take decades to centuries to clean this up, truly clean it up, letting Mother Nature do it by her own devices. One of the key reasons why bioremediation is not being used right now is that most people don't know about it, and others have incorrect or incomplete information about it. One of the quaint arguments about bioremediation is this concern about oxygen. It's the oil that is using up the oxygen. It's not the microbes themselves. When that oil is gone, uh, those organisms uh, are no longer at a competitive advantage. And in fact, they become food for other organisms that are present in the marsh itself. 
In a federal code which regulates how to handle oil spills, there is a list of products that have already been researched by the EPA and approved to be on that list as products that can be used in the case of an oil spill. It has been stated by both BP and EPA officials that if they ever decide to use bioremediation to clean up this spill, they will only use products that are already on the NCP list. But bureaucratic barriers have been tying up the bioremediation companies to a shocking extent. We're going to focus on one technique we found particularly effective. That process does not introduce more or new microorganisms into a toxic area. It uses naturally occurring enzymes, which are what microorganisms use to break down oil and chemicals. As an example, we will use a product made by a company called Oil Spill Eaters, Incorporated. In the past 20 years, this bioremediation product has cleaned up over 14,000 oil spills. There has never been a single bad report of any damaging side effects from the use of this bioremediation technique as it is safe and non-toxic for humans and animals. All branches of the U.S. military and even British Petroleum have successfully used it to clean up oil spills in the past. With this technique, you use planes or airboats to spray it on the oil and digest it to CO2 and water. So the end result is CO2 and water. At least 12 different official requests for permits have been made to the EPA to use OSE2 to clean up the oil. These requests were made by one state governor, three state senators, one parish president, the U.S. Coast Guard, the city of Destin, Florida, and the Louisiana Department of Environmental Quality. But despite this, the EPA has still not issued a permit. But the good news is that there is a solution, and if implemented, it would bring the health of the Gulf back quickly. Things aren't going to get better until the Gulf waters are truly clean and safe. It is vital that the seafood and the tourism industries recover quickly, and the public's health must be protected. The only way those two things are going to happen is if the EPA permits are issued immediately so that the contracted cleanup crews can begin using these very effective tools. We must demand from our elected officials that they remove the bureaucratic barriers that are preventing the official cleanup crews from utilizing bioremediation.